right, thank you, Teresa. Um, next up is Dennis. Hi, can everyone hear me all right? Okay. Um, so hi, everyone. Thank you all for coming today. My name is Dennis Shen, and I work in the UCSD Mobile Systems Design Lab under the direction of Professor Sujit Day. And my uh, project is called Cloud-Based Caregiver Training. So our project began with the rather simple and obvious observation that saving money is a universal ambition. Quick show of hands, who here likes to save money? Yeah, most of us, I imagine, right? Because whether you like it or not, based on how our world functions, uh, money is essentially a necessity for survival and practically imperative for a comfortable lifestyle, something I'm sure we all desire. I mean, why else do we often refer to money as dough? It's because we all need it, right? Um, uh, all jokes aside, the goal of our project is to help individuals save money in the realm of physical therapy. So according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, the physical therapy job market is expected to expand by approximately 36 to 39 percent within the next decade. Meanwhile, the national occupation growth rate is a wee 11 percent. At the same time, conventional therapy demands the presence of a physical therapist to supervise the patient's motions and to assess his or her progress. Concurrently, ensuring progress necessitates multiple visits and sessions. So in other words, traditional therapy is expensive. So this is where we come in. Our lab viewed the coupling of the drastic discrepancy in expected market growth rates and the costly nature of conventional therapy as a tremendous opportunity to not only benefit the individuals receiving treatment, but to also potentially catapult our nation into a new era of physical therapy, one described by low costs, convenience, and technological advancements. Also, it definitely doesn't hurt to cut a slice of that pie. Um, in essence, our mission is to create a sensor-based intelligence system which can monitor and gauge the caregiver-patient interaction with the following characteristics of a real-time guidance, uh, positive feedback, scoring mechanism, and music. Now, before I go any further, I just want to clarify a few points. Firstly, the difference between a physical therapist and a caregiver is that a physical therapist is a licensed professional, while a caregiver is an amateur, say a family member or friend. Uh, second, I want to preface by stating that this is not some sort of physical therapist witch hunt. We're not out to try to eradicate the physical therapist's occupation, but rather introduce an alternative method of treatment. So what is this alternative method? Well, we begin by recording the first session between the physical therapist and the patient and create the requisite avatars. Rather than continuously visiting the physical therapist at the clinic, the patient can now receive treatment from the comforts of their own home. Now, I'm not that delusional. I know most people can't afford a home like this. But if there's a way for people to save money, then who's to say dreams can't come true, right? Anyhow, with the single Microsoft Connect sensor, a seemingly ubiquitous commodity, our system can capture the caregiver-patient interaction and in real time render their appropriate avatars in the virtual scene. The pre-recorded avatars will then demonstrate the correct motions before inviting the users to follow along. So now I want to show you a quick demonstration. Uh, please keep in mind that our project is still in its embryonic stages. So what you'll see before you is a very crude version of what we hope our system will develop into. Uh, but without further ado, I'd like to introduce you all to my lovely assistants, uh, Rachel and Brad. Uh, for experimental purposes, I'll be only dealing with two avatars, such that Brad is the pre-recorded avatar who demonstrates the correct method and is treated as the ground truth. And Rachel is the user who is to emulate Brad's motions. So this first video demonstrates the effects of incorporating music. Our utilization music centers around two dominant purposes. The first being to behoove synchronization, and the second is, if need be, to divert the patient's attention from his or her own pain. But what does this mean? Well, once in a blue moon when I actually go running, I'm much more inclined to finish my workout if I'm listening to my music playlist. On the flip side, if I'm forced to listen to the monotonous drumming of my own footsteps, I am indubitably inspired to make a quick U-turn for home. So with that being said, we can take a look. So unfortunately, the music isn't playing, but if you can imagine Timon and Pumbaa singing Kuna Matata along with this, um, you can see that Brad and Rachel are moving in synchronization, which is very beneficial for de determining user accuracy. And I'll touch upon that point in a moment. When we tried to duplicate this experiment, um, the user was not as in sync with the uh, pre-recorded avatar, which demonstrates that music has the potential to reduce delay. Um, however, obviously music can eradicate all of our issues with latency, um, so it's uh, imperative to always account for some sort of delay. And so to tackle this problem, I began to ask myself, all right, Dennis, what knowledge from any of your $1,000 classes can we apply and resolve to this issue? 
Uh, apparently this was too tough for me to answer and I drew blanks, but this knowledge roadblock actually served as a stepping stone in allowing me to dive into the always thrilling world of reading research papers and journals. And while swimming through the waves of different articles, I came across a common theme of cross-correlation. So for those of you who enjoy speaking in math, the equation is on the board, and for the rest of us, here is this video demonstration. Essentially, cross-correlation is a popular technique in information theory to determine the similarity between two signals, and it's defined by sliding one signal across the other and computing its sum of products. However, not only is delay inevitable, but also delay can be inconsistent. As a result, I adopted four different time estimation methods where I can estimate the delay of the entire sequence, each body part, each gesture, or the body parts of each gesture. So the first two methods are not too difficult, however the third is more complicated. To actually segment the motion sequence by gestures, I had to first introduce a gesture recognition program. And to do this, I use a multi-class one versus all support vector machine with a Gaussian kernel. So a support vector machine is a learning algorithm used to solve classification problems, and a kernel is just a function that transforms information from your input space to your feature space. Essentially, the process consists of offline and online tasks. Offline, we begin by creating a feature vector for each data sample, where this feature vector may contain information such as the joint uh, velocity, joint angles, or the joint uh, positions. And then uh, to create the best classification model, we do some data preprocessing followed by model selection. So in terms of data preprocessing, I would rescale the feature matrix by means of standardization. And for the model selection, I implemented a grid search using k-fold cross-validation to obtain the optimal parameters c and gamma. Using these optimal parameters, I can then train and create my final model. Online, the newly generated model will identify and segment the gestures uh, during run time. And so the results here display a successful implementation on a shoulder rehabilitation exercise where the uh, user um, lifts their arms to the side, front, and up. Uh, the corresponding confusion matrix and probability matrix are on the screen for anyone who wants more convincing. Um, now we can jump back to our issues with latency. And so here are the results of every single time estimation. The numbers on the screen represent the different uh, estimated delays. And so if we can see in the second figure under method two, uh, it's quite possible that every single uh, body part can have a unique delay. At the same time, for the third gesture, uh, different ge uh, gestures can have different latencies. Ergo, the fourth method, which amalgamates desired qualities from the second and third methods, hypothetically emerges as the optimal time estimation approach. Um, we'll see whether or not this holds to be true, so stay tuned. And so the next topic on our agenda is to actually calculate the user accuracy, and we do so in two ways. The first is we can use the inner product or the dot product to uh, calculate the angles between the joints of interest. We can also calculate the gesture joint velocity. So if you look on this screen, the plot is in the blue, is the user's uh, right wrist uh, y amplitude over time. And the red lines represent the velocity vectors. So now we can finally get to the good stuff, the fruit of the labors, my results. So every single uh, column, with the exception to the first, which represents the original sequence, is the result of a different time estimation method. And every row corresponds to a different joint angle. So we have the left and right shoulders and the left and right elbows. So if we take a look at the first row, we immediately attain some insightful information. Uh, we can unequivocally eliminate the first time estimation method because the sec even though the second and third gestures are more in sync, it comes at the expense of the first gesture. The second and third methods improve upon this deficiency, but still not enough to sleep easy at night. But if we take a look at the fourth method, well, now we're in business. Because not only are every, all the gestures uh, in sync, it also has the highest Spearman correlation coefficient value. So in light of these exciting news, we can finally calculate the user accuracy with ease. So I've talked a lot about a project, but I haven't mentioned a key word in the title, and that's the cloud. Um, because each logic implementation uh, requires a significant amount of computation, all of the computation intensive tasks will be executed in the cloud. Because this is still a ways down the road, uh, that's why I haven't elaborated more on it. But we believe that if our system is implemented to its utmost, um, our system can serve as a vehicle in helping to mitigate sports and health related concerns and potentially increase career and lifespans. So in conclusion, we see that music is not only a form of entertainment that can enhance the user experience, it also has the potential to reduce uh, user pain and delay. Um, the fourth time estimation method, which uh, is the segmentation of the body and the gesture, is the best time estimation approach. And we can measure the uh, user accuracy by computing their joint angles and velocities. Uh, so to wrap up, I'd just like to leave you with this lasting scenario inspired by the great John Lennon that I believe uh, encapsulates our project. So 
Imagine there's one copay. It's easy if you try. No frequent visits, only once and goodbye. Imagine all the patients treated right at home. Imagine PT is fun. It isn't hard to do. There'll be music and guides and perhaps less pain for you. Imagine all the patients living life connected. You may say I'm a dreamer, but I'm not the only one. I hope someday you'll join us and see that PT can be fun. And so I'd like to just quickly acknowledge uh, Professor Sujit Day, who's here today, for uh, giving me the opportunity to work in this lab. Uh, PhD student Jason Yao Lu for mentoring me. Uh, Jung Hyun Im, who is one of the three international Korean summer scholars. And the Cal IT2 program for uh, making this uh, possible. So uh, thank you all again. And I'd like to open the floor to any questions. Oh, so we're using the cloud because um, uh, it's a, there's a lot of computation intensive tasks. And so we believe that if we uh, can take advantage of the cloud, uh, it can improve our uh, feature. And because we feel like you know, we're potentially headed down towards a, a kind of cloud-based technology since it's becoming more and more ubiquitous, um, we're kind of on that bandwagon and just going on it. Yeah. Uh, any other questions? All right, thank you all.